Mr. Kazarian. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, two years ago, we had a chance to talk again, and it was when you launched, launched the campaign Greece is an A+. Uh, do you still have the same view about the Greek economy? Yeah, we see the Greek economy as being you know, on the verge of really having great potential to move forward. I mean, the debt issue has been clearly resolved. I think 90% of the people realize you don't have a debt problem. We had a very good conference today here with government individuals, and they know that applying international rules, it's not a debt issue. It's now we're a management issue, and that's a big step forward. I mean, people for a long time thought you had a debt problem, mm -hmm. and when you measure it using international rules, you don't. So now it's let's focus mm -hmm. on you know moving everything forward. That's a big step. That's mm -hmm. a good step. Mm -hmm. The debt issue is a big issue. Uh, you became well known in Greece when you first said that our accounting system related to our debt calculation is rational and anachronistic. Yeah. Um, as we see, you still have the same opinion, right? We, we have it, but in the last year to two years, Dozens and dozens of other, all the major accounting firms, the organizations, economists, the Germans, Angela Merkel, the finance ministry, they've all said that using this, what's known as future face value, which is how much the debt is due in the future, mm -hmm. if it pays very little interest, is not a real number. For example, if someone were to say, I'll give you $100 or 100 euros, and you have to pay me back in 100 years with no interest, clearly that's not 100 anymore. And that was a while. It took a while to get that understanding. So when you apply any international standards or the European standards, the debt number uses what's called a present value. And that's very important as opposed to a future value. Because, you know, money in the future is very different from money today. So what you suggest, what we should do? And uh, I also want to ask you, on which basis you say that uh, our debt is 22% yep. of our GDP, because uh, we saw it in your presentation. Yeah, um, what, what you should do, the first step, is you should announce what your actual, what actual number is. Like as an official pronouncement, you say, by the way, our present value of our debt is this as of this date. That very much changes the entire dialogue. And then you say, which is very important, is how does it compare to Portugal and Ireland and Spain, for example? And that's where the 22% comes in, because yours is a small fraction of the other countries. Now, what that means is you have a huge competitive advantage, and that competitive advantage should be used to your advantage. In the past, you made pretty clear that you're open, Japonica is open, either to advise or to cooperate the, with the government power in order to change that. Did you finally talk with the previous governments about this thing? We have talked to and continue to talk to not only, you know, the governments, but also, you know, labor unions, for example, were very open because when they know that it's really not the debt and its management, what they think what they seek, whether it's, you know, the, the pensions or whatever, those issues all change. Mm -hmm. So it's not only the government, but you want to meet all the different major unions and the different student groups. They also need to understand. That yes, but the, the government issue. will decide if we will change the, the, the way we count our uh, debt. The government will, but you are a democracy, and a democracy s seeks to reflect the voices of the people. Mm -hmm. And that's really important. So, uh, what about the new government? Do you think that they would be more friendly to your suggestions, to your ideas about the debt? Not only the new government, but the other governments that aren't currently, you know, part of the current coalition, they're all coming around. Oh, really? I mean, oh, yeah. No, there's a big, I mean, you could see it today, like, look, they didn't have the tools before. Measuring it was a little hard. The international tools are complicated. As we know, you, you are, you were a key player in the Greek bond market, right? You still are. Um, we, uh, we not only, uh, we, we own everything we've always owned, and we continue to be very um, long-term investors in Greece, and that's our perspective. Up to now, uh, your investment in the Greek bonds are profitable. The, proven the, to be profitable. That has been one of our better investments. Mm -hmm. We're long-term. We're the best friend Greece has because we're not, 
you know, short-term investors. We're long-term investors who come here to help educate and offer our services however we can to help. That's a good investor to have. Mm -hmm. uh, when you saw the Greek uh, bonds rising in uh, 2014, did you sell? No. You didn't? No. And you still have uh, those Greek bonds, That's right? That's correct. What's your opinion, your, what's your prediction for the next year about the Greek bonds? The Greek bonds will go to par. Uh -huh. That will be close to 100%. Ah, uh, really? Oh, yeah. Now watch. I mean, uh, there's going to be a big change. You're going to see a huge 90, change. 90, let's say, 95? Um, the short term is already close to like 95, 96. The longer term... For the next year? Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. in the 60s. But they'll all go to par, if not more. Watch. As you know, the four Greek systemic banks went through the procedure of recapitalization. Did you participate on the book building process? Um, we haven't disclosed anything. Um, what we've done, we typically don't. We did. You we, don't want to disclose. No, we don't want to disclose. We, we don't have to. You know, we're a private firm. We did disclose that we own bonds, which is long term. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, but okay, you don't want to tell us, but uh, um, you see the extremely low prices of the yeah. banks as an opportunity. It, it, the, the banks are a very interesting situation in that so much is dependent on, you know, getting the government moving in, a, in, the, in the right direction and it's going there. But it's going to take some management. I mean, they do need turnaround management. Mm -hmm. I and mean, you should yeah, not for look... Sure. You, they need some turnaround management skills. I mean, it's nice, you know, the, gov the people elect the government, and they, you know, can elect political officials to be ministers. But then in terms of the advisors and the, you know, the ministers and the civil, you need to get the very best people to execute. Mm -hmm. That's what you need. And uh, my last question, yeah. uh, part of the solution of the NPL's uh, problem would be the sale of the NPL's in funds. Do you have an interest in uh, such a case? You know, our views of the NPLs are that you have the NPLs because you're in, in part because your economy is so far as contracted and your interest rates are so high. If your interest rates drop to where they should be and the economy started moving, these NPLs start disappearing from NPLs and become performing loans. It's not that hard. It's not that easy to it, fix our economy. Think. It's not that easy to fix the economy. That would be an overstatement. But the impact of declining interest rates will be huge on mm -hmm. the country. And but you didn't answer about NPLs if you are interested in Well, well I did, but I asked it kind of indirectly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So thank you All very right. much for this interview, Mr. Kazarian. I appreciate it. I hope it was helpful.